Hey friends, welcome to episode 22 of the Christ Community Church Brawley podcast. We're so thankful you decided to take a few minutes to hang out with us. And if this is a blessing to you, we encourage you to share this video. Of course, like and subscribe, and we hope that this is helpful. And so, Mr. Caleb, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. This is your last episode on the podcast. How do you it feel? Is. Yes, and uh, I feel good. I feel sad. But I feel good. I'm Bitter glad sweet. for the time that we got to do this, and it's been amazing. I, I remember even before I was a Christian, uh, when podcasts first kind of became mm. popular and listening to them, I never imagined, so to speak, that I would, and not that we have the most uh, <laughs> famous podcast in the world, sure. but I just never imagined that I'd have the opportunity to do a podcast at all, and so it has been a blessing, and I'm glad that we got to do it. If that's news to you, you're thinking, what, Caleb's leaving? Yes, in fact, that's uh, been an announcement that we made at the church some months ago, mm -hmm. and so stick with us to the end of the episode, and we're going to share some more details about that. But hey, yes. we've got some segments to Yeah, get and to. so we're still going to do the normal thing, and this, even though this is our last episode, we still want to uh, do our normal, uh, normal programming, and so we're going to start with our question of the month. And so uh, the question we have is, uh, for you first, what will heaven be like? What will heaven be like? There's lots of ideas amongst Christians and, and in culture about what heaven's going to be like. Sometimes people think, am I really going to be singing forever? That sounds, you know, at some point that has to be boring. With and a harp. Yes, <laughs> with the harp on a cloud. You know, is it going to be like Chris Tomlin leading worship for a thousand years and then, you know, uh, Elevation or Hillsong or whoever for another thousand and so forth? Will it be endless singing? You know, what's that going to be like? Well, the Bible doesn't give us a tremendous amount of explicit detail, but we do get some clues. Mm -hmm. And one that I want to reference is in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3, where John the Apostle writes, And his servants, being God's servants, shall serve him. Other versions say shall worship him, but that Greek word is always used in a verb tense, there's action and activities that are going to be going on. And so sometimes mm -hmm. people think that heaven is going to be like this eternal church service, that mm -hmm. we're all going to be in chairs and and like we normally think of Sunday morning, or that it's just going to be this nonstop singing. But the Bible does indicate that there is going to be some kind of work involved. And something to consider is that in Genesis 1 and 2, before sin entered mankind, work was to be a blessing yep. in the garden. Obviously, now all throughout history and Scripture, work is still to be a blessing, mm -hmm. and we see that in heaven, Revelation 21 and 22, work is still to be a blessing and an act of worship. So yeah. what kind of work are you going to do in heaven as a Christian? I don't know. I think that's part of the beauty of the mystery mm -hmm. of what heaven's going to be like. But the most important thing is that heaven is heaven not because of the streets of gold or because a quote-unquote mansion, which that's a separate issue, mm -hmm. <laughs> whether that's a real mansion or if that means something else. But heaven is heaven because Jesus is there, and you are now a redeemed soul, a child of God who gets to be with him. Yep, 100%. And, and uh, in regards to the the thing about how we will still work in heaven, I think of, I can't remember exactly where it is, but the parable when Jesus talks about, um, at the end of this parable, he gets in and he says, I, I trusted you, with, or mm -hmm. I gave you little and you did much with it, then therefore, like, I'll give you, I can't remember how it goes. Yeah, but, one over three cities, five cities, yeah, ten cities. Yeah, and so it's this idea that, like, if you are faithful with what God gives you here on earth, he actually gives you um, more duties, so to speak, in heaven, mm -hmm. which are, again, blessings. Like, mm -hmm. we don't want to think of it duties in, like, a burdensome thing, but it's yeah. like, if you're faithful with the things God gives you here on earth, with the tasks that mm -hmm. he gives you here, he actually gives you more when you get to heaven, and he trusts you with mm -hmm. more, and he puts you over certain things. And so it, it's very interesting. I think, again, people have this idea that heaven is, like, this very mystical, just like you're on this cloud, but it's it's a very real place, yeah. and uh, we're going to be doing real things, and and all that is amazing, and and it, it's it's a beautiful thing to think of that. I always think of it like this: um, the garden, right? It was paradise on earth, and and heaven is much like the garden. It's a redeemed garden. You even see the in at the end of Revelation, you see mm -hmm. like the tree of life is is there, mm -hmm. and and so you see these things like it's almost like the garden, but 2.0, and it's like it's a very real place. And but ultimately, I agree with you. The most important thing, though, what makes heaven heaven, I think Paul Washer said, like walking on streets of gold mm -hmm. and swinging on pearly gates is going to get old after a couple thousand years. Mm -hmm. But what will never get old is actually getting to be in the presence of Christ and getting to be with him. And another amazing thing that I actually do look forward to 
um, in another parable when Jesus is speaking, he says uh, that, and it's actually in regards to people who won't be in the kingdom. And he says that uh, um, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, they'll be in the kingdom and, and you will be outside of it. And so um, even though it's a terrible thing to think of, something I notice in there is like, it reminds you that like all the saints of old are there mm-hmm. too. Like when we get yeah. to heaven, like we, you get to talk to Moses and yeah. you get to meet John and, and Augustine and all these people from all of church history, like that, you know, that we read about and that we, um, like we look up to in a sense. And like, these are, are, you know, they laid the foundation of the church and these yeah. are people that like we love and we get to meet them and talk to them. And it's like that also too, I think is going to be really amazing to get to talk to Abraham and to Moses and to Isaac and Jacob and all these people that yeah. we read about in scripture. And so, um, those things will never get old, right? But the streets of gold, yes, awesome, beautiful. But like, what's amazing is is the saints that are there and Christ Himself that we're actually going to be in His presence, and yeah. and then when we're in His presence, as it says in First John three, that we'll actually be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And so, part of getting to heaven is like we're now glorified, like our sanctification is complete, and now yeah. we're with Him, we're like Him, we're in His presence, and that is what we have to look forward to more yeah. than anything. And, so. and something to consider is that all those who are in heaven presently, or those who have rejected Christ post-cross or who rejected God pre-cross, those who are in hell presently right now, 100% of all of those people in heaven and hell would want you personally to surrender your personal life to Jesus so that way you can enjoy heaven and God forevermore. So consider that with wherever you're at in your relationship with God. Really quick, one little side question. I'm just sure. curious your thoughts. Um, and he didn't know I was going to ask this, but do you think honestly, do you think there's going to be sports in heaven? I think there can be sports in heaven. Um, I think that's a definite, plausible, you know, probable thing. Does the scriptures say that there will be sports? Not explicitly, but I think that that's possible. Fair. All right. Well, we always have a great quote. In fact, Caleb puts these quotes together, and this is from one of his all-time favorite people, (laughs) Jonathan Edwards. I love Jonathan Edwards. And the quote goes like this, Resolution 1, I will live for God. Resolution 2, if no one else does, I still will. Yes. Um, And so if you're not aware, uh, Jonathan Edwards, he has these 70 resolves that he wrote. And it was basically as a Christian, there was 70 things that he was like, I resolve to do these things. And I love that these are the first two, Mm. like before he gets into, because he gets into even um, just like simple things. And and I don't necessarily agree with all of them. For example, I think one of them is like, he resolved that on Sundays, he would not laugh. Like, and it was like, (laughs) I I don't understand that one. Right. So I don't agree with all of them, but, but this one I love, like, I love how he starts it off with like the most important thing, like of everything else that I resolved to do in my mm-hmm. life, the number one thing is I resolved to follow God no matter what. And 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 even if no one else does, I still will. And um, I, I just love that because it, it's, it's true. There, there's this sense in the Christian life because it's not always easy. It is a blessing and there's amazing things, but it's not always easy. And, and there needs to be this sense in, in your mind where you've chosen, like, I resolve, mm-hmm. like, in my soul, in every bit of who I am, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter who is in my life or who's taken from my life, mm-hmm. no matter what, I resolve that I will live for God. Yeah. And then I love that. And even if no one else does, if I'm the only Christian left on earth, if everybody walks away from Christ, I resolve that I will still live for him, even if I'm mm-hmm. the only one who does. And and that needs to not only be our general attitude in our Christian life of like, like this is just who I am now, yeah. but also even, and we talked about this just a couple of days ago, even in like the details of our Christian life, for example, like reading your word or praying, like you need to resolve that even when I don't mm-hmm. feel like it, like reading your Bible and prayer not needs to not just be something like I'll do it, you know, kind of when I I'm feeling spiritual, you yeah. know, like I'm feeling, I'm feeling like praying today. So then I will, it's like, no, I resolve that I'm going to read my word every day. Yeah. I resolve. I yeah. I resolve that I'm going to pray every day. And so uh, we were talking about this just the other day, how like for me, for example, I have a set time every morning where I, I pray at a certain, not at a certain time, but for a certain amount of time every morning. And mm-hmm. I read my word for a certain amount of time every morning. And we were talking about how you kind of want to make this balance of not letting it become like a religious thing, but also having that resolve in your life. Mm-hmm. So that way on the days where you don't really feel like it, because yeah. even as Christians who love Jesus, there is days where I just don't feel sure. like reading my word. I feel like sleeping in or I feel like, you know, watching a YouTube video instead. But but no, like I, I resolve that I'm going to do these things no matter yeah. what. And so that I, I just I love that idea of like resolve, like this like deep, like 
I'm rooted in this is who I am. One of the things that comes to mind, talking about that sense of resolve and conviction, and that then translates to discipline and action consistently, is that there's so much of that mentality, integrity that's lost in our culture today as a whole, and especially amongst uh, younger generations, and even in the church it's crept in, that it's so much based on just feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, And whatever feels good is what I do, or if things get hard, I'll give up. There's, at least from what I've seen, there's such a lack of, things like honor mm-hmm. and dignity and and discipline and conviction you know you hold to certain things regardless of what anybody else is doing regardless mm-hmm. of what social media says or culture or your friends or your family or how you feel this is who i am this mm-hmm. is what i do i follow jesus even if nobody else does to yep. go with what jonathan edwards says and and one of my prayers is that the church today especially in the west with all of its affluence and in comfortable uh lifestyle comparatively to the rest of the world that we would have this sense of resolve and mm-hmm. we see all throughout church history that whenever the pressure is on the the bride of Christ that many times one strengthens the believers and two spreads the gospel, and three, weeds out those who were not truly a part of the the bride. Mm-hmm. And so, anyways, one of my prayers is that we would uh, have the, the heart of Jonathan Edwards in regard to this, not the not laughing on Sundays thing, <laughs> but at least that I will live for God yeah. in my workplace, in my family, at Christmas dinner, at, you know— even on social media or wherever it's not popular, and even if no one else will. I think of like Noah and and his family. Mm -hmm. Literally no one on the planet was following God except for him, Noah the righteous, and his family. And many times we say, oh, it's just so hard to be a Christian nowadays. Yes, in a degree, but not comparatively to so many believers Mm -hmm. in so many other centuries and countries, even presently nowadays. And so anyways, church needs to have some resolve to them. Yep, and and it will help us in every area of our life. Like you even think of things like marriage, right? Yes. Which was once just understood like this is a lifelong, like I'm resolving to be with this person till death do his heart. But (laughs) now, as you shared, like in our culture that doesn't really have resolve, doesn't have honor stuff. That's why marriage is so like, whatever, if it gets hard, then I'm out. Yeah, and it's just like it, like there's no more weight and depth to like yeah. this is a lifelong covenant Lost like the sense of the sacred yeah and we need to lead the way to recapture that Amen. anyways Love we could it. just go on and on yes. about those kinds of things yes. but uh let's let's yeah. move on so now we're going to be talking about what are we learning as always we always want to be um learning new things and i know both of us are kind of towards the end of our semester in Praise school i Lord. just finished yes <laughs> i just finished literally Did you really? yesterday. yeah i took oh. my last final on tuesday i'm not and there so yet. i am done i'm now at peace a little bit but um I anyways t- what are you what are you learning yeah, so I, you know, I have three research papers to write. I finished one. I've got two more in the tank right now. But one of the classes is uh, scientific apologetics, okay. and and I am so looking forward to this semester being done. It's been really great, but you know, looking forward to moving on. And one of the uh, I would say key things I'm taking away right now is that it has moved my soul to worship God in this deeper, unique way in the sense that um, this this class focuses on the design aspect of the physical universe, everything from the telescope to the microscope and everything in between. And it is just, it is, Im- it is miraculous. Mm-hmm. Um, every, everything that you see is so deeply, uh, designed. In fact, one of the books that I was uh, supposed to read was called Creator and the Cosmos, which if you're watching on YouTube right now, I'm holding the book in my hand. And uh, this is by Dr. Hugh Ross, who founded and leads the organization Reasons to Believe, which I one of many, many great Christian apologetic resources organizations today. Well, uh, Dr. Ross in his book, at the very end, in Appendix B, he has a section where it is uh, 150 
aspects of fine tuning from the universe, our solar system, and our Earth, 150 what we would call dials. Mm. And each of these dials within the universe needs to be so finely and precisely in place that if it's even off by a degree or a click one way or the other, then you don't have life Mm -hmm. on the Earth. You don't have complex life the way that you see it today. And to have five dials is one thing, 10, 30, 100, Mm -hmm. and and in here, and there's actually more than 150, quote-unquote, dials, everything from why does gravity pull at this rate? Mm -hmm. You know, and and we are, the Earth or the solar system that we're in is in what's called the the habitable zone of the Milky Way galaxy, the spiral-armed galaxy, Mm -hmm. and the distance we are from the sun and the rotation and the distance the moon is, the size of the moon, um, and how we live on the skin of the Earth, Mm -hmm. the skin of the earth and how the core of the earth is so big that it allows the electrical magnetic forces to not be too strong or too light. And the list just goes on and on. And that's just in the telescope and the observable with our eyes. But that's not even talking about uh, ATP within the cells, how Mm -hmm. it generates energy for the cells and just the deep complexity of life. Yep, This is not an accident. And in fact, in so many... Christian and atheistic debates, so many atheists confess that the topic of fine-tuning is the is one of the deadliest weapons against atheism, because you cannot have what you see today yeah. unless you have a designer, which then this has pushed um, certain atheists to uh, propose like a multiverse and you know string theory and but there's no grounding anywhere yeah. for there's just purely talk yeah there's science no, fiction yeah, it's that total point. science fiction there's zero grounding for something like that because they know that if you stick within our universe it is unexplainable mm-hmm. to have life and that's just the physical we're not even talking about the metaphysical the metaphysical mm-hmm. things of consciousness yeah. and the soul mm-hmm. you know and how does the the laws of math, yeah. you know, it's not physical, but it's real. Yeah, and the, again, the list goes on and on. Yep. And so, it's just moved my soul to worship in such a, a, a deeper way. And, anyways, Hugh Ross's book, Creator of the Cosmos, one of so many great resources out there. But I thought that I would just kind of pull. That. Is it a textbook, or is it just kind of like a? Um, I mean, it gets pretty technical in certain places, but it, it's it's accessible. It's you like know, your average reader could still sure. Enjoy it. I mean, you'd have to think through it. You'd have to look up certain terms. You might need kind of a prerequisite in certain areas, but generally, it's accessible. And I would go to reasonstobelieve.org and the 150 dials that he mentions in Appendix B. Um, you can go to their reason reasons.org slash fine tuning and it goes into a much more expansive oh, explanation cool. of all the dials. So you don't even necessarily need the book to find that. You Correct. Okay. Yeah, I would just go to their website reasons.org. But anyways, nice. what am I learning? God is amazing. That's awesome. I mean, infinite wisdom. In the words of Isaiah the prophet, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are as high as the heavens compared to us. Amazing. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. How about you? Well, for me, so as as same as you, well, actually, I as I just said, I actually have finished, so I do not have the same stress as you at this <laughs> particular moment. Yeah. And so I'm very relieved on that, done with school. And so, um, but even throughout school, which it can become hard to, to balance um, all the reading that you have to do for school, then the reading, of course, reading God's word, and then also reading books on the side that I just want to enjoy. But um, one of the books that I've been reading is actually going back to Jonathan Edwards. Uh, it's actually, it, and actually when I was looking up the quote today, I found out something very interesting about him. Uh, you know, he actually went to Yale University at 13 years old in 1716. I did hear about that, yes. And at that time to go to university, a prerequisite was you had to be fluent in Latin, Greek, and mm-hmm. Hebrew. Mm-hmm. He went at 13 years old. I remember hearing and that. And I just yeah. think like, what are we doing today? Anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah but um but so the book that i've been reading by him <laughs> it's on typology right and so we see typology and in 13 scripture. year olds need to get off of tiktok <laughs> yeah. to learn latin yeah, go to yale get fluent in latin <laughs> greek and hebrew as a prerequisite as a prerequisite it's <laughs> wild uh, yeah different times yep different times um and so in his book he writes this book on typology where he kind of we see typology in scripture of like um 
Jesus used the analogy of like how a, a, a seed of wheat has to fall into the ground and die before it can be resurrected, kind of using like that as a mm-hmm. as a type of resurrection and um, or even marriage. Right. He uses type mm-hmm. the marriage as a type of like the mm-hmm. relationship that Christ has with his Jesus church. Five. Yeah. And so we see types throughout Scripture. But what um, Jonathan Edward, Edwards does in this book is he actually kind of takes that on the road, so to speak. Like mm-hmm. he he tries to see types in, in nature and in creation because we do believe like God. God is, of course, created, as you were just saying, everything with wisdom and, and a purpose. And and I think not just to acknowledge, wow, like what a perfect, amazing creator we have, but also like there is lessons to be learned, so to speak. And and there does have to be guardrails on it in the sense of like if you're looking at something in nature and you get a lesson, a lesson out of it that contradicts God's word, like sure. it's wrong. But um, just some of the lessons that he he takes from it is, for example, he talks about like how the difference between like a young plant versus a, a tree and how like a young plant at first, it's kind of easy to bend and, and, and manipulate, whereas a tree is a lot harder. And he kind of uses it as a type for like um, a person who stays in their sin longer. It's a lot harder to mm. to um, maneuver that than if you were to first address the sin when it first creeps up in your heart. It's easier mm. to uproot it. He even says like a young plant's easier to pluck out of the ground than than some something that's rooted deep yeah. and it kind of talks about like that is kind of how it is with sin. If you, if you uproot it quickly when it mm-hmm. first sprouts up, it's a lot easier than trying to uh, allowing it to take its roots and then trying to pull it out. And so just things like that. And I, I find it very interesting. I just, he's, he's got a very imaginative mm-hmm. mind and I do kind of, kind of reminds me of like C.S. Lewis, these um, men, these Christian men that are very imaginative and kind of yeah. uh, use their imaginations. And, and of course, with all of that, like, for example, screw tape letters or even this thing by Jonathan Edwards, we never take it as scripture. We always need sure. to uh, address like, OK, is this actually um, biblically accurate? Is it? But I, I do like the idea of us as Christians kind of being a little bit more imaginative and, and seeing God's universe as it yeah. is a very... Um, mystical is not the right word, but spiritual world that we live in. And there are things that we can't fully understand. And um, I think sometimes we fall into one side or the other of like, even as Christians where everything like has a very natural explanation or we like over spiritualize everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's this balance of recognizing like, you know, we do live in a very spiritual world where there's these yeah. spiritual things happening and there are lessons to be learned and things throughout life and, and events in our life. Like everything truly as Christians, we can say everything does happen for a reason, mm-hmm. um, but not over spiritualizing things and not trying to explain everything away as just like coincidence or natural. Like we yeah. understand, like we actually have a God who um, is sovereign and, and we live in his world and it's, it is a spiritual world. But anyways. And so I do, I, I like that book. I appreciate yeah. some of his um, takes on creation, and it's a very beautiful way to kind of view the world yeah. we live in. And a little fun fact, talking about the integration of the spiritual and material, Sir Isaac Newton in the 1600s is one of the most famed physicists, not just amongst Christians, although he very much so was a theist, but even amongst just the 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 scientific community and, you know, discovering laws of thermodynamics and so forth and acknowledging that, you know, to your point, it is a very spiritual thing, that it's beyond naturalism, it's beyond just what you see with, or what we would call empiricism, Mm -hmm. which is uh, basically a philosophy that what's only real is what I can sense with my uh, my senses, mm-hmm. uh, but the world in in reality in life it is so much beyond just what you can see, hear, yep. taste, touch, smell. It's metaphysical. It's spiritual. There's is something beyond. So, anyways, yep. good stuff. So, as we alluded to, which by the way, if you've stuck with us this far, congratulations. <laughs> and Caleb, this is your last podcast yes. episode at the time of this recording. This upcoming Sunday, December tenth will be your last Sunday at Christ Community Church Brawley in the, your particular capacity. I know that you're going to be visiting, and mm-hmm. I'll let you share that. But what's next? What happened? What's yes. going on? Yes, cue the tears. No. Tears. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, basically I'm going to be moving back to be with my family, to be um, which where I'm from is uh, Marietta. And so for those of you who don't know, we are located in Brawley in the Imperial Valley. My family is located about two and a half hours up north in Riverside County, again, Marietta. And so that is where I was raised. That's where I'm from. That's where my whole family is. And I still, I have a little sister who's only eight, little brother and sister. They're twins. They're 17. My dad's about to turn 50. And so my family is still fairly young, Mm -hmm. right? And, And I've been away from them for quite a few years when I came to the Valley. And if you actually want to know more about why I came to the Valley, you can go back and watch my interview with Sean. Yeah. I think it's like episode three or four. It's 
if you scroll yeah. way down, you'll find it. And in that interview, I explained how I ended up at the Valley, why I was here. And so essentially, I've been here for about four years, and I miss my family. Sure. Also, um, I'm trying to pursue getting my bachelor's degree, and so I got accepted into California Baptist University right. for fall of 2024. And so um, that's about 40 minutes from my parents, so it also got to work out where I can live at home, commute, um, finish my degree, and um, with kind of the plan to... Uh, my father has his own business, and so the plan is to kind of enter into the family business and, mm -hmm. and work with him and work alongside him and then eventually take it over and hopefully be able to do the same thing for, Lord willing, my future son if I have one. And, mm -hmm. and um, it's a beautiful thing, and so I'll be serving the Lord with my family up there. They're all, thank you, Jesus, they're all yeah. Christian. And, and so it's, I have an amazing opportunity to get to be with them, to worship with them, to serve the Lord with them, to uh, just be a part of their lives again because um, I— if you go back and watch the video, you see I, I ruined those relationships, but God restored those things, and he's given me this opportunity to now go and to be a light for my family and to have this opportunity that I didn't have because of the choices I made. Yeah. And so it is a blessing. And as you said, it's only a two-and-a-half-hour drive, so I'll still come and visit. And so if any of you attend this church or if you live in the valley, you may still see me around. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come here, you'll still see me every once in a while. And so... I'm not gone forever, yeah. but um, it is definitely a new chapter of my life for, for sure. Like this is a new uh, chapter. I've been, uh, I got saved in the Valley. This is the only church, Christ Community Church is the only church I've ever really known. Mm -hmm. And this has been my home and my family. And yeah. so, and it'll always be my home and my family, but it definitely is a big um, chapter in my life that's kind of closing. And now mm -hmm. I'll be going there. But as Jonathan Edwards says, and no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I will live for God. Yeah. And so... Kind of my heart. Caleb's going to be dearly missed. He's made quite the impact, not only in and through Christ's community, but just in the valley and the relationships that have been built. And as we always acknowledge, for the Christian, it's never goodbye. Mm -hmm. Just see you later. And we may see you later a little sooner than, uh, than expected. But uh, we're excited for you. We're praying for you. We're cheering you on. We're always here for you. We'll always love you. You'll always be our brother. And we just pray that God would go above and beyond your own expectations in this next season. And so, on that note, we have lots to thank God for. And so, getting into our last segment of praise reports, what do you praise God for recently, Mr. Yeah. Caleb? Well, I guess it's sort of recently, but just kind of as a whole recap, what I really praise God for is just my time mm -hmm. with this church and, and everything that he did through this church to, to bless my life and to just, um, like, his church is everything, like, like he has, he's everything, but like this family that he's yeah. given us, the church, and, and not just Christ Community Church, but the church as a whole. Like, yeah. there's so many, as you said, relationships I've built here with people, uh, Christians here, not that don't go here, not yeah. don't go to this church, but they're the church, and, yeah. and they have loved me and, and cared for me, and it's been a beautiful thing. And also, just praise God for Rise Youth Group mm -hmm. uh, that I had the opportunity to start that, that I was the vessel that God used to start this thing, something that will live on past me like even as i leave it's going to live on through fernie so to speak mm -hmm. like you know he's done an amazing job of we're taking he's on do that, wonderful. that role and so i just praise god for that the time that i had and also that we have fernie who's gonna uh, take it and i really truly pray that he does it even greater than i yes. could and ever would and so yeah. grateful for all those things Praise well, God. before we wrap things up here, just a couple of praise reports on my end. And so last time we were together through in podcast episode 21, since then there's been a lot that's happened. And so on October 31st, we had our annual fall festival at a local park at Hinojosa. And there was over a thousand people who came out. It was just an amazing outreach event. Gospel was shared in numerous times in numerous ways. So that was awesome. November 19th, we had our annual Thanksgiving community dinner here and this room was just packed out of people and lots of food and it was a great time of fellowship and then December 15th once this episode goes out you'll see that we've already had our Christmas worship night which is uh, something that I would like to uh, I would have liked to promote to you to come out but by the time this episode goes out it'll have already happened and so I encourage you to look on our social media to check out the pictures and videos of that. We've had several baptisms. But one last thing I'll share before we close, we are officially bringing on an associate pastor. His name is Gabe Garcia. And if you want more information, check our Sunday service on December 10th. And with that being said, God bless. We love you guys. We're praying for you. We're cheering you on. And we'll see you in the next episode.